What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. If you're not familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news that happens in the scale world of RC over the past week, or in this case, several weeks. The Scale News has been a little bit absent as of late, but it's not because of me necessarily. It's just been because there's been so little going on in the scale world as far as new releases or things like that go over the past several weeks. And that's kind of typical for summer. This week, we do have a handful of topics that have happened over the last several weeks, and we'll touch on those, but we'll also just kind of touch on, you know, what's going on outside of just specifically the news and kind of why the scale news has been a little bit absent. One of the big news topics that has happened is that HPI was actually bought again. And this time it was bought by a Scandinavian company who has a background in RC again. And hopefully this time things go a little bit smoother than they did with Ripmax. Ripmax was the previous owner, UK based, and they just couldn't make it float, so it all went away. Now this group is supposed to be picking it back up, but who knows how long before the supply chain actually picks back up and people who own HPI vehicles will see support again. The statement put out by the new owners, Vestergaard, said that the whole supply chain of all HPI vehicles, as well as Maverick brand vehicles, will be you know back in running order and and hopefully that means support for you guys who own hpi ventures as well that platform has been slightly doomed since it really never started several years back and just kind of trickled out barely during this very rough time for hpi but even though that happened several weeks ago nothing has happened since then so we're still in just kind of a slow waiting game before maybe we start to see some sort of actual movement. Good news from ProLine over the last week, and that is that they've already announced the dates for next year's ProLine by the Fire. So those of you who were able to attend ProLine by the Fire this year and liked it, or for those of you who saw some of the coverage out of there and really wanna go, you've already got a date to plan on. The date is May 16th, 2020. It, I'll definitely be there. It was one of the best events put on over the last couple of years. So make sure if you plan to make it, you mark your calendars and you watch the ProLine pages because I assume that tickets are going to go fast this year. And I heard that there may be a cap on the number of people that are allowed to attend based on the size of that venue. So. Make sure and watch for that because it's one of those events that you don't want to miss. The artwork that they put up on the release day information is very circus looking. So I'm guessing that we're going to see some sort of circus theme, which seems appropriate as a lot of us kind of look like clowns running around chasing toy trucks in the desert. So I get it. Axial Fest is just around the corner. We're gonna be up there in just over a week already. I was up at Donner Ski Ranch this weekend and while up there, picked up kind of a few tips that may be helpful to some of you guys who are planning on making it up there. I put them in the vlog that I did from the Donner Ski Ranch yesterday, but in case you didn't see that, I'll kind of break it down for you here. The distance from the rocks to the parking situation or the camping situation, depending on where you're at, is a pretty decent distance. And I'm told that there's going to be shuttles running from the parking lot up to the rock section. Now, I'm not sure how late into the night they're going to run that though, so if you plan on doing night runs, make sure that you're prepared to walk all the way back down to your vehicle. The good news is, is that it's downhill the whole way. Also, again, since there is such a distance between those rock areas and the parking or camping, make sure that you've got enough you know, snacks and water, things like that with you that you can easily take up on the trail for you, your kids, or whoever else is going with you that can't carry their own. Probably a good idea to have some basic tools that you can carry along with you as it may not be as cool as it may not be as convenient to walk back to camp to fix your stuff as it has been in previous years. We're at a higher elevation now. Cisco Grove is around 5,000 feet. Donner Ski Ranch is around 7,100 or 7,200 feet. So not that you can prepare yourself much for high elevation, but be aware, don't overexert yourself. You are at a higher elevation. There is less oxygen. You're gonna notice it. If you overdo it, you can easily get some elevation sickness. Beyond water, make sure you add sunscreen, bug spray, and chapstick to that list of things that you have on you. The sun can definitely get to you at those higher elevations. Make sure you've got plenty of good sunscreen and reapply as needed. Bug spray, if there is no breeze, the bugs are pretty bad up there. We noticed it last weekend we were there, when the wind died down or when you got into a calm area, the mosquitoes were on you. It's high and it's dry and you'll be miserable if you spend three days up there and you don't keep putting on chapstick. Don't have a ton of other details yet about the location as far as where camping will be or where parking will be, food on site or anything like that. So 
over prepare is probably a better option than under preparing. Make sure you've got everything there to be self-sustainable just in case you don't have a handy second option. There is a gas station just off of Interstate 80 which is only a few miles down the road but it's a two lane road to get down there and depending on how parking and things like that go, I could see that road getting a little bit backed up during the busy times of people coming in and out to the event. So, so it may not be convenient to try and make that trek either. But those are really the news items that have happened. Again, there just hasn't been a lot going on. Summer's oftentimes the slowest part of our hobby. We have seen that Element is shipping their builder's kit version in case you guys haven't seen that yet. Just a stripped down builder's kit, you know, chassis, axles, no wheels, tires, bodies, bumpers, things like that. So you can get that nice and affordable, all the option parts that you really want in there as well. Good option that's just hitting people's hands. The SSD builder's kit is starting to pop up a little bit and very very soon you'll see the VS410 Pro kits shipping to customers as well. So with all those options hitting, well, I'm sure we'll see some cool summer builds happening, but that still has left the new release schedule a little bit slow on the scale news update side. This week I thought that I would just put an update out there, give you guys a few bits of the news that we have had and let you know what's going on so you guys weren't just thinking I gave up on this series because I actually really like this series. I just wish there was more to talk about all the time. But just like the last handful of Scale News updates we've done, I wanna throw a question out to you guys at the end of this one. And like I just talked about a little bit ago, summer builds are going on. And summer isn't always the building season. A lot of times it's the winter when you can't go outside and you have nothing better to do than to wrench on your RCs. But the question for this week is, what is your next build gonna be? Is it gonna be a summer build or are you waiting and just driving what you have now and gonna build something new over the winter? Let me know what it's gonna be. Or if you don't have the next one planned out, what's your dream build? What do you want to build next? I have mine planned out and of course it's on the VS410 Pro with a modified version of the half cab body that it comes with. Even though it's been slow with the news, I've been crazy busy. So a lot going on, a lot coming up soon, including a new place where I'll be filming everything. So stay tuned for that because that's going to be a fun one starting in just a few weeks. I hope you guys are enjoying the start to your summer. I hope I see some of you guys up at Axial Fest. Say hello if you are, because I definitely like to talk with all of you guys, but I hope you guys have an awesome rest of the week. I hope I get to see you next week. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're not already. Hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.